Ungefragt. Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show on Ungdoms Radio. Tune in at 98.7 every Monday and Wednesday at 11.30 and every odd Friday at 2 o'clock. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge and if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta and this is Anna and we are back with the second part of the how to survive a shitty day challenge. We unfortunately also have to warn you for a quite a shitty audio quality. So we were unable to record that episode in the studio. So please forgive us for the quality of the audio and it will be good again in a week. So stay tuned and enjoy still very good quality of the content. Anna, will you just go ahead and read the challenge description? Yes, I will read the challenge now. Every month I get a few of those days where I'm really feeling under the weather. Recently there are more of those days as the winter is coming. And since I'm living in Denmark, where it's cold, rainy and windy for six months, I get really affected by this weather. A small disappointment at work or a tough day at home with kids gets me to feel completely down. Unfortunately, I can't just hide under the blanket, so I was wondering if you have any tips for how to survive a really shitty day. Let's move now to even deeper level oh my when God. it comes to uh, dealing with shitty days. It's option number three, address your difficult emotions. We people usually are not so good with addressing our difficult emotions. So very often when we have a shitty day, we don't even try to deal with being pissed off, with being angry, being sad. We try to get rid of it. We try to avoid it. We try to neglect it. We will rather, you know, run away from it, stuff it inside. We will, you know, eat uh, a kilo of ice cream just to uh, eat it away. <laughs> yeah. Rather than address those difficult emotions. Exactly. There is so many things people do just not to face their uh, difficult emotions. And Marta, you gave very good examples like eating, overeating, drinking, or for instance, just throwing yourself into some activities or work just not to think about it, just to build up a lot of fake uh, activities or some, I don't know, um, going into some addictions, just not to get to the bottom of your difficult emotion. And it's a really deep topic because that's not something, I guess we would have to have a separate podcast to really address all those uh, questions and uh, the, the depth of that issue. But what I wanted to say about it is that unaddressed emotions, they don't disappear. They get stuffed and they just create more issues in the future. We think that they disappear. We have some instant gratification when we have eaten something. Sooner or later, we will start noticing that it really didn't help yeah. <laughs> uh, in, uh, in real life. But it's so important because we don't usually learn how to deal with those difficult emotions. We are often told we should not have them. Yeah. As children, don't exactly. cry. Big girls or big boys, they don't cry. Don't be such a sissy. Whatever kind of things we hear, it's not okay. Well, it's better for the girls than for boys, of course, but it's usually it's like what you're crying about it or people do it to us with good faith very often, but they actually make us suffer. Exactly. I even saw on uh, YouTube some time ago uh, a very funny movie, which will reappear in option number five, but that's another story. If we would treat a physical uh, sickness the same as mental sickness. So, for instance, I saw in that movie a guy just fell from the stairs and his friend is like, get up, what are you making a big, big deal about? And many times people are trying to help us by this kind of like a tough love 
oh stop you know you have to just go move on and whatever another thing is that we have now this positive thinking philosophy and i think that at the very bottom it has a very good message but it's being abused because we are taught that we are supposed to think positively constantly and feel positively and positive thinking is the answer to solve all our problems which i agree with in a principle but it's very difficult to think positively when you have some exactly difficult emotions to cope with and then you might even feel guilty that you don't think positively and you are just trying to pretend you are positive when you are really not and it's really really harmful i think we have to have an outlet to release those difficult emotions I uh, would like to offer to you guys to listen to a wonderful podcast about addressing your negative emotions, which was recorded by Brooke Castillo. And I will, of course, have that link for you. She addresses in a wonderful way how you can deal with those negative emotions. Because very often we are so scared of those emotions that we don't even think about it, that avoiding them and going into our fallback like overeating, overexercising, overworking is actually so much more damageful. And if you start thinking about it and if you start doing exercises where you allow yourself to have those difficult emotions and you just start comparing how they feel compared to how you feel when you have not addressed them, it's actually way worse when you haven't addressed them but it's not something many of us consider we would really do anything just to avoid just to go you know run away from it and this is where for example going out with friends could be misused yes. this is where we would continue going out all the time just not to deal with our internal issues so guys addressing your difficult emotions and it doesn't have to be a big deal it can really be writing down in your journal about it it's not like now you know now i have a shitty day i have to take a day off to address my <laughs> difficult emotions sometimes it is a good idea but yeah. it's not like this is something that has to happen every time but it is to acknowledge them they exist and you can only send them away if you have addressed them and let them go if you don't address them you're just gonna stuff them and they are going to come back in a worse way possible yeah actually you marta mentioned something that uh, gave me a uh, inspiration for an example from uh, from companies uh, many people go in denmark at least from what i've heard on a stress leave and i've heard it in different companies over the years and i also heard that many of those people they did not realize they have any problem with stress until it was too late because they it's this kind of mechanism of just you know like being stressed or not feeling okay but keep on working not giving yourself a break not giving yourself an outlet to address your difficult emotions and then at one day they just totally collapse and i think that uh, this is a really huge risk if you are bottling up everything you might even miss the moment when your body will simply say no it's enough you cannot handle this anymore that's why it is so important to learn how to do it and as i said it's a big topic and it's something that we can't uh, really fully deeply address as one yeah, option it's more like a teaser here yeah so but luckily we have discovered this really great podcast from brooke castillo specifically on that topic so we will just have it for you guys uh, in uh, as a link now we will move to option number four do something that you love to do yes that's actually a very good one so i specifically thought that it's a good idea to discuss the whole part of being grateful and the whole part of being your good friend or talking to a good friend and addressing your negative emotions before we move to that part of do what you really love to do because i really wanted to make it clear that it's not a good idea to skip the previous steps and just go do what you love to do because you may simply go for like i really love ice cream i'm gonna eat a kilo <laughs> of yeah. ice cream and you are not really helping yourself in more than five minutes i think you can feel great for five minutes 
uh, eating those ice creams, but probably in a while you are not going to feel so great anymore. Especially if it was a kilo or two, and then you might not feel so great in a toilet. Yeah, yeah. but let's say it's when it's the scenario where there are some deeper issues that you should address, then we have given you those important steps to look into. If it's just a one-off crappy day, if it's just like a PMS or whatever kind of a situation. Yeah, the winter is coming type of a situation. It is okay to go for just simply doing what you love to do. So it's not like you always have to go through the entire process and every single time you have to sit and acknowledge your emotions. It could be that you simply, you know, it's dark, you haven't seen the sunlight for 65 days and you just feel, you know, under the weather. Yeah, you don't know if it's a day or night, what season is that and, you know, where are you and it's just sad and, and you know, shitty. So then we would recommend you exactly to do something that you love to do. And examples can be uh, infinitive. I actually had one example, but I will not say it because it's naughty. So Marta, do you have any examples? <laughs> I would like to hear the naughty example. Well, you, you can always have sex. That sounds like a pretty good thing and like a production of endorphins and so on. Yes, uh, and also, you know, because as, as we all know, there are very good practical implications of that. But actually, it's, it's a great boost for a body. And if you have a person to do it with, I think it, I don't know how about uh, our listeners, but it always lifts my mood. So that's a very good example of what you can do on a shitty day. When we talk about doing what we love to do, then of course we can mean some kind of a hobby or some kind of passion. Exactly, exactly, the passion. So this is something where you are like, okay, I have a really shitty day. Maybe it's a great uh, idea to watch a movie that you love or read a book or I don't know, whatever it is that brings you joy in life. Then just simply do it. Make sure that you make space for doing that in your everyday life. Sometimes we forget to make space for what we love to do. We work so much and there are kids and there are so many responsibilities that we don't do the things we love to do in our everyday life. And that brings us to the biggest topic of loving what you do, meaning do you love the job that you do? Yeah, but that's, that can be a, a totally different story, um, although it would be great if you would love your job. Yeah, but that's something maybe that is worthwhile addressing, because if a lot of your shitty, day, uh, shitty days are coming from the job situation, it could be a very big uh, message to you to look into that job situation and if it's worthwhile staying in or if there is anything you could do to shift towards loving what you do. But in general, it's important that you find space in your everyday life regularly to do what you love to do. Okay, Marta, give me an example from your life. What are the things that you love to do and you do them when you have a shitty day and you would like to uh, boost your mood a little bit? I think that cooking or going out to to eat some really good but healthy food is something that can really help. Going out for something unhealthy is not a good idea. It's something that is good only for a moment and then you feel crappy again. But going for some really good, delicious and healthy food, when you feel that you're giving your body something really wonderful, that really helps me. Now that uh, we are doing the You've Got Five Options, I sometimes start to write, start to solve a challenge for someone and it really helps me. It's really something I came from the moment of life where I was not having any space for doing what I love to do in, in a meaning of any kind of hobby. I was just having a work, taking care of the kids, taking care of the house. And it was like from the moment I wake up until the moment I go to sleep, I had a big plan for everything that has to be done. And I started to create that space in my everyday life so that I have that breathing moment so that I can actually start doing the things that I love to do, but I have forgotten about it for a period of time. And I was not going through a very nice road at that point of time. 
Mm -hmm. I, I can uh, totally confirm that everything that Marta has said is correcto. Uh, and when I think about what you have said, I, 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 I couldn't agree more. Actually, for instance, solving a challenge or working on five options uh, is something that I love to do. And it always helps me, even if I am in a really shitty mood. I also love to do a lot of actually small things. You know, of course, I love to write. That always helps me, although sometimes I'm getting stuck. But I love to write. I love to go to the cinema. Many times when I have a really shitty mood, I go to the cinema and I'm already lifted up like five levels. It's, um, it's just that, but you have to allow yourself to have a space. This is very important what you have said. You have to allow yourself to have a space for those things that you love to do in your life because you might just find yourself on the vicious loop of doing things constantly over and over again, not having time for the things that you really enjoy. And that's very dangerous, I think. Yeah, I really have had that moment in my life where working full time, having three kids and my husband traveling for his job where I was just so busy and I just didn't think there is even a possibility to create a situation where I could uh, have space for myself and doing what I'm doing now, but I have made it work. Marta also mentioned something really cool. It is on the a, on a edge of reality and daydreaming, but sometimes when you have those shitty days, you can create yourself a vision board or maybe uh, start to uh, write your goals or your dreams and try to uh, figure out how can you achieve them or just uh, create a yeah exactly vision board or a collage or a couple of things that remind you why what are you striving for to get you a little bit uh, out from the situation when you are right now and put you a little bit into the future where you see yourself in a different place yeah, that's a really great uh, thing to do because sometimes you are in a situation where you don't, it's not possible for you right now here in this moment to start doing what you really love to do. So for example, you may want to be an actor, but right now you are not engaged in any kind of a theater or movie and you still need to eat and you still need to have the roof over your head. So you may be doing a job that you don't necessarily love. And on those shitty days, engaging into an activity of doing your vision board, imagining yourself already having that what you really want to do, that's something that, that can lift your spirit. Yeah. So uh, definitely worth mentioning in uh, if you can't actually right now do what you love to do, imagine yourself doing what you love to do in the future. It will bring you closer Mm -hmm. to being able to do that in your everyday life in future and it will lift your spirit today. Yeah, exactly. But just try to uh, also do some uh, small little practical steps towards that dreams because sometimes you can just get locked in that dream. daydreaming. It happens to me quite often sometimes and uh, but I, I think it's a fantastic thing just to show you that there is so much more ahead of you and this shitty day is just a shitty day it also allows you to build some sort of a distance towards it yeah. and strive for more yeah it's a really great uh, thought so uh, we will give you a link uh, to a description what do we mean with working with your vision board? Mm -hmm. Because maybe not everyone has been doing something like this yeah. before. So we will uh, give you some nice material to have a look at. Option number five is uh, something that can help you instantly. It's about using an old medicine, the laughter. Yes, I think it's actually one of the oldest medicines for the shitty day. And I know that some of you will think, uh, uh, guys, I have a shitty day. What do you mean that I should laugh? Well, um, I have never met a person that was depressed while laughing. It's as simple as that. It's impossible to be depressed when you are laughing or to be sad or even to be angry when you are laughing. And to get yourself to laugh, well, there are a lot of different, different ways, but it's, it is possible. You've had that great example when you have attended TEDx in Ulse. Oh, yes. 
it was uh, okay guys so in april uh, i was on my first tedx in unse uh, i wanted to say odense but uh, unse for our no super danish oh my god even danish sucks okay even my danish sucks it's that city on finn the biggest city on finn and we had uh, one of the speakers was i don't remember her name lina the, yes the, la the laughter lady i think but uh, we will of course uh, include the link uh, in in the written description of this option and that woman was uh, simply uh, laughing i don't know how to describe it she came on the stage and uh, we knew that it will be something about laughter and she just said hello and started to laugh like for no reason. So at the beginning, everyone was a little bit confused. Some people started to laugh with her. And then she started to tell her life story, how at one day her life changed and her husband announced to her that he's leaving her. And she started to laugh again, like really laugh. And she was telling the story about how her husband is leaving her for another woman. And she was laughing out loud, like LOL, LOL people literally. And we couldn't stop laughing with her it's like i could not resist i started to laugh and i started to laugh so hard that actually she was laughing people started to laugh i laughed even more for some weird reason it really was working for me and then everyone got silent and i was the only one laughing and then people were laughing because i was laughing and then she was laughing because people were laughing guys after 20 minutes i had like my makeup was ruined because I was crying out of laughter and uh, my uh, cheekbones muscles were, were hurting because I, I was just laughing so hard and it's unbelievable because first of all you can laugh like you can just pretend that you are you can just laugh out loud and after some time you will actually start to laugh and second of all laughter is extremely contagious so if you are with another person you can even try this exercise and you can start to laugh a second the person you are with will start to laugh after 10-15 seconds it's just how it is it's unbelievable and this woman simply laughs she laughs even if she has no reason and then she gets herself into the state of mind when everything is hilarious funny and you cannot be sad or depressed when you are laughing it's as simple as that yes yeah, so if in general humor it's, a, it's something that can save you in so many ways. And for being a parent, as you've mentioned, you have kids. Having good humor when being a parent, it is just like a miracle. And uh, being able to turn a shitty uh, event in your life into a humorous event, it's a great skill and it can save you so many shitty moments. But it's also this thing about, we've, uh, we've been talking about it in previous uh, podcasts, fake it till you make it. It's a real thing. Your brain cannot really tell when you are smiling or laughing for, um, for, re for real mm -hmm. and when you are faking it. And if you fake it for a while, if you stand in front of the mirror and you start smiling to yourself, at the beginning you will feel so stupid. But in a while you start actually smiling or yeah. laughing yeah and then you are sending some signals to your brain and you will actually start feeling better if it doesn't work you are so depressed that it doesn't even work when you are smiling to yourself into the mirror try going out and smiling to every person that you see people will start smiling back to you some of them <laughs> some of them most of them <laughs> but you will most likely even if they are not smiling back but looking at you as a weirdo yeah. you will probably start laughing as well yes i also heard this uh, really great quote like if you are uh, depressed or bored start to lick uh, strangers faces you know on the street <laughs> Each time I'm pissed, I imagine myself going out on the street and just start to lick random people on their face and I cannot stop laughing. It's like, actually, I have this really, uh, I have this really uh, weird sense of humor and I can laugh out of any situation, which I think is actually a great asset of mine. I remember that even when I am ending relationship and there is like very tense and emotional uh, conversation, I'm cracking jokes and I laugh. 
even if I'm hurting inside. But you know, it is a kind of a relief. I, I, I can find a, a funny situation in everything, but it's it's more about you know shifting your perspective. If something that we also talked in option number one. And I actually have a great example from yesterday because yesterday Marta came uh, to my place as we were uh, preparing for this podcast. And when she arrived, uh, she was like, I was like, so how are you? Ah, not so good. I have a migraine. No, no, no. And how are you? And I'm like, yeah, not so good. Neither. Two hours later, we were laughing so badly that my stomach hurt. There was a lot of things that we did yesterday. Uh, including uh, looking at our vlogging um, um, attempts. Yeah, we, we were really good at laughing at ourselves and at our vlogging exactly. attempts. And then we also went to some uh, YouTube videos from 90s when we were in a kindergarten and we were looking at the uh, you know video clips or music from 90s and Marta started to dance and I was laughing so hard oh my god I, I don't remember when I was laughing so so hard probably the, in uh, in the third biggest city uh, in Denmark at TEDx <laughs> yeah, that, that could be no but it was just amazing and it's it's like one person makes and then it was contagious we actually had a evening full of laughter and it it really and we came from a a benchmark of a shitty day both of us and i even cured my migraine laughter really works revelation yeah it's a great strategy so if you need uh, a little bit of laughter in your life just see what rings your bell if it's stupid movies on youtube that are i don't know a compilation of fails 2017 or whatever makes you uh, laugh just put your favorite sitcom on or or whatever or read something funny or meet with the friend that has a stupid crazy sense of humor but Trust me, when you are laughing, it's impossible to feel sad or depressed. And on that great note, I would like to summarize which were the options for surviving the shitty day. Practice gratitude, be or see your best friend, address your difficult emotions, do something that you love to do and use the oldest medicine. Laugh about it. Mm-hmm. So that was it, what we have prepared for you today. So we hope, Isabella, that it is something that was helpful. And to the rest of you, as I think everyone has a shitty day every now and again. So thank you for listening to us and goodbye. And if you would like to have any tips about breeding animals or growing roses, get back to us and we will make a research about it. And we would love to hear what are your strategies to survive a shitty day. Correcto. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show. Remember that we are on air every Monday, Wednesday and every second Friday. Remember that you can visit our website www.you'vegot5options.com That is www.y-o-u-v-e-g-o-t-5-as-a-number-options.com where you can submit your challenge and find our podcast. You can also find us on iTunes or any podcast app. Du lytter til din lokale radio i Aarhus på FM 98,7 MHz og 89,5 MHz.